All right, we've got a pretty good start to our flexible inventory system. We can collect items, which will now appear in our inventory, and we can see a description and picture. We can collect additional items, and when we go to our inventory, because they have a different name, they show up in a different slot. However, when we collect more of an item we already have, our inventory has no way to distinguish that it is the same as the other items, and so we're not stacking them. Additionally, it doesn't know what the max number of items is per stack. Now add on top of this the fact that our numbers are rendering behind our graphics, and we've got a little bit of work to do. Let's get started. Now all of our hopes and dreams are going to start off in the item script. If you head down to the on collision where we find our item, what we just want to do is find out whether or not we can actually hold this item in our inventory and if not, leave some behind. To do this, we're going to take our add item line and we're just going to turn it into a local variable called leftover items. Now what this is going to do, it's going to send a message to our inventory manager, which will then calculate whether or not it can fit the item and send back an integer. Now, if leftover items is equal to or less than zero, we can destroy the game object because there's nothing left. However, if that is not true and there actually is something left, then we want to make the quantity of this item equal to our leftover items. Now obviously it's not liking this, so we've got a little work to do in our inventory manager. Now in our inventory manager, we can head down to our add item, and instead of making this void, meaning returns nothing, we're going to make it an integer, so that it will actually return the number of leftovers once we've filled our slot. We want to continue to go through all of the items that are in the slots, but now instead of just checking to see whether or not there's something in the slot, we want to check to see if the slot is entirely full, and if it isn't, then we also want to check to see if the item in the slot matches the item that we're adding. If so, then we can add the item to that slot. The other possibility is that the slot is completely empty. So I'm going to put a double line here, which means or, and we're going to check to see if the item slot's quantity is equal to zero, and if so, we will also be able to add the item. So if there's nothing in the slot, or if there's a little bit of room and it's the same type of item, we can then move to the next line. Now at this point, we are going to continue the pattern of checking to see if there's leftovers. So rather than just sending the item over to a void method, we are going to create another local variable. This one will be an integer again called leftover items. And we'll make it equal to what we get from our item slot. Now again, it's not liking that at the moment, but that's just because our method is not prepared for this. We're going to create a new line here. So once we've sent the items over to our slot, we're going to check to see how many leftovers there are. And if the leftover items is greater than zero, meaning we actually have leftovers, then what we want to do is return the number of leftovers. So that will let our item know how many items were left in order to put those back on the map. Now this works great if you have a Zelda style inventory where you only have one slot for each type of item. For example, you only can hold 99 bombs in one slot and once that slot's full, you can't take any more. However, you may want your bombs to be able to flow over into other slots. And so at this point, we need to continue our loop. So rather than immediately returning our leftover items, I'm gonna move that down. And here, if we have leftovers greater than zero, what we're gonna do instead is change the number of leftover items to be equal to, and this time we're just going to run our add item method again. So the method we're in right now, and we're just going to loop through it until we've run out of items. Now this time though, when we call it, we're going to pass in our item name, but instead of passing quantity, we want to pass our leftover items. So that each time we run it, we're only sending the leftovers into the loop. At this point, there's just one other possibility, and that is that all of our slots are full, and that the item we're trying to collect is kind of just left floating in space. Now, if that's the case, we want to return, and for this, we're gonna get outside of our for loop as it could not enter into the loop because of the fact that our slots are all full. And so now we'll just return the quantity, meaning the item will just go back to being what it was on the map and we won't pick it up. Now, if all the red squiggly lines we're leaving in our wake are starting to get to you, you can take a little comfort in the fact that if we go back to our item script now, you'll notice that they're gone because we fixed the problem of our add item returning an integer. That doesn't change the fact that this one still has that error, but it will go away shortly, I promise. So let's head on over to our item slot script now. Now in our item slot, we're just gonna head on down to our add item method, and we're gonna change this one from a void to an integer because we want to return the number of items that are left over. 
Now the first thing that we want to do here, and I'm just going to do a little bit of restructuring here, is we want to check to see if the slot is already full. If it is full, so we'll put if is full, all we want to do is return quantity, meaning we'll let it know that the leftovers are everything that was sent in because there was no room. Now if it makes it past that point, we can actually just set up our slot to look the way it's supposed to. So we can update the name, update quantity, we'll update our image, and we'll also update the description. Now up to this point, we're essentially doing what we were doing in the first place, but our quantity is going to get a little more complicated. So I'm just going to grab that one. And we're going to move it down below here where we can make this a little more nuanced. So the first thing we want to do is we don't want to automatically set this quantity equal to quantity because if there's already three items, we don't want to just make it three if we're adding three more. What we want to do instead is put plus equals quantity. So add the new quantity onto our old one. Now if this quantity at this point is greater than or equal to, and here we're going to create a new variable called max number of items. It's not going to like that at the moment, so we're going to head up top, and we're just going to create a public serialized field, which will be an integer called max number of items. So now what we want to do is we're going to check to see if this quantity, so in this item, is greater than the max number of items. Then what we'll want to do is grab these two lines from down here, make sure that we add our brackets, and then paste them in. And this will just update our quantity text to show that the slot is full and also make sure that our text is turned on. At this point, we can then let our script know that the slot is truly full. Don't forget to take away that semicolon. Now at this point, we are ready to return the leftovers. To do this, we're going to make a, another local variable. This time, we will call it extra items. And it's just going to be equal to this dot quantity, so the quantity of this slot minus the max number of items as those items have now filled the slot and we want to know what's left. We'll also make sure that this dot quantity, so the number of items in this slot, is actually equal to the max number of items. And finally we want to make sure that we return those extra items so that our inventory manager can see if they fit in another slot. You'll notice that this line here about our item sprite is still just hanging out. It managed to survive the restructuring and we'll just pop up here to update image and make sure that it goes in there as well. Now we're almost all done here, however, we are missing one important thing, and actually I noticed that this bracket should actually go down here. We want to make sure that we update the text and check our leftovers all within the same statement. However, what if we have not overfilled the slot? What if we've put a few things in there and there's still room? We need to consider that possibility. So down here we're just going to plain update the quantity text to show that we've just added a few items. And for this, we will mostly use the same line here, except that we don't want to update the text to the max number of items. We just want to update it to this dot quantity. And don't forget to turn this to a string so that our text can actually read it. Finally, we do need to return something because our inventory manager is looking to know how many leftovers there are. And so finally, we're just going to return zero as we were able to fit all the items in the slot in this case. I'll just get rid of these extra spaces to clean things up. All right, so back in Unity, we're going to click on our inventory canvas, open that up, and head to our item slot. Now the first thing we want to do is make sure to set the max number of items. In my case, I'm going to use nine. We can then use the overrides to apply this to all slots. We also want to fix that problem where our number, the quantity, was showing up behind the image. All we need to do to fix that is we'll click on item slot, open up the prefab, we just want to move our quantity text below item image. Might seem counterintuitive, but lower items in the hierarchy of user interface appear on top. Now when I get in my game, I can collect that first coffee and burger, three and two. Can head down below, now this one has four in it. So when I collect it, you'll notice that it's stacked. And now the final coffee has nine coffees. So when I collect it, it fills the first slot completely and then puts the additional seven here. You'll also notice that our quantity is now appearing in front of our image. All right, I hope you found that one helpful. We've still got more work to do in the next tutorials where things get exciting as we can actually start making these items do things. I'll see you in the next video.